Good morning, everybody. It's Minute and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Fire Emblem Awakening. We've got some options on what we're going to do next. Because in the last episode, we found out that the masked swordsman Marth is actually our daughter Lucina from the future. And that is something that I'm sure everybody already knows about because they played Smash Brothers. I don't know what it is, but like I feel like every Smash Bros. game has like a thing that it spoils immensely. Like, I guess Smash 64 doesn't spoil much, but maybe back in the day, uh, people still hadn't played Metroid yet and they weren't aware that Samus was a girl. Maybe character descriptions told you that she was. I don't know. Maybe that was the thing. But in Smash Bros. Melee, they spoiled that Zelda was chic. In Brawl, they spoiled uh, Porky in uh, from Mother 3. And in Stinkin' Smash 4, they spoil Lucina being the daughter of Krom. And literally, that's the only reason I played this game all the way through. Because, like, I got it... I actually got it on release date. Because I remember back when uh, Nintendo... Or back when the game was first re game released, Nintendo had, like, a little uh, offer going around. Where, like, if you bought this and Shin Megami Tensei 4 at the same time... Uh, or maybe it was Shin Megami, Shin Megami Tensei 4 uh, during its release. If you bought that along with Fire Emblem Awakening, then you got like a $15 eShop gift card. So I just did it. I got it for that reason. And uh, I got a couple, a couple little bit ways. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Like a little bit into the game and not really too far in. I kind of dropped it after a while. And... I just wasn't having too much fun with it, or I just wasn't understanding the mechanics all that jazz, so I never finished it. But when Smash 4 was coming around, and when Lucina got announced as a character, I had no idea who she even was. And, uh, when she said that one line for my father, it spoiled everything for me that Lucina was the daughter of Krom. I knew who Marth was, because I got in that far into the game, and I, I'm pretty sure I found out that Marth was a girl and all that jazz. By the way, I was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be to, like, not say Lucina, because there were a lot of times I had to edit out when it got revealed that Martha was a girl, or when Martha joined us in general. I had to, like, change he and she around. I had to, like, uh, stop saying Lucina. I kept getting cut off because I wanted to say it. I couldn't say Marth. But yeah, that was a thing. And it's ironic because when I first played Melee, I thought that Martha was a girl, but I didn't know until Brawl, actually, <laughs> that Martha was actually a guy. Oh my god. But, yeah, what am I even trying to say? Like, it spoiled in Smash 4 that Lucina was the daughter of Krom, and that made me really stinking angry. So I went ahead and picked up Fire Emblem Awakening again and finished the thing in like a couple of days afterwards. So that's my history with that. And in Smash Ultimate, it spoils something in Xenoblade. If you haven't caught wind of it, I won't mention it, but uh, those of you... Uh, I guess you'll know the secret code. It's spoiled 7. We'll say that. Uh, but yeah... I don't even know what, what we're going to do because like I, it's I know I feel like I've been saying this way too much lately it's been like a bajillion years since I recorded and I don't rem really remember where we left off all that well but I do know that after Lucina joins you this is where you start getting optional party members so we could continue with the story here or we could go to some paralogues we're gonna be doing that in this episode though I'm not sure which one is you saw I think there were two that opened up to us uh, I think I'll just walk around the map a little bit just to See if I'm correct on that, or maybe I'm totally wrong. But yeah, after Lucina joins you and tells you about like the uh, coming from the future and whatnot, uh, we get a lot more paralogs opening up to us. I don't know if this is it though, but I guess we'll check it out. This is what we're going to be doing today. Uh, here we go. Let's go into paralog 12, disowned by time. I think... Yep, it is. Where am I? How'd I end up here? Krom. Is this the place? Hmm. Yeah, it's got to be. The townsfolk spoke of ruins in these parts that carry the legacy of the Divine Dragon. Of course, they neglected to mention that the place is crawling with Risen. I suppose we're just going to have to earn this treasure the old-fashioned way. So we're looking for treasure, it seems, and we got some communication things to do, mainly just with uh, Lucina and her parents now that uh, she joined us. So uh, let's go ahead and get those out of the way with uh, Krom and Lucina, then Rob and Lucina. Um. Might I ask for a lesson, Father? I would love to learn the sword from you. No. You're a master in your own right already. What could I possibly teach you? 
You're likely better served training alone where you could hone your own style. But I was hoping that you might... That we could... Hmm? No. I'm sorry if it's a bother. I won't insist. Hmm. I never said it was a bother. I just meant that with your own level of skill, you'd be... <sighs> Fine. Go fetch a pair of practice blades. <laughs> Wonderful. I just so happen to have two of them right here. <laughs> well, someone's certainly prepared. Very well. Let's begin. Impressive as ever. I was certain I dodged that one, but you nicked my shoulder. No. Still, you had me soundly beat. Had you not held back on that blow to my chest, I'd have felt I'd have a few shattered ribs. I was right to think that yet I was right to think you still have much to teach me. We'll have to make these lessons a habit. What? Wait, you didn't just did you throw that match just so we'd continue doing this? Huh? Why, father, I would never. <sighs> Devious. I see I'll have to keep a closer eye on you. <laughs> when Lucina joins, she'll automatically have uh, rank C communications with both her parents. So that's why, even though she hasn't actually done any battling with us specifically, we are able to access these communication sessions. Up next is Robin. Um... Mother, guess what? I found a wonderful dress in the town market. It was gorgeous. I thought it'd just be perfect for you, so I bought it. I was thinking you could try a different style for once. Wow. Why, Lucina, what a lovely surprise. Now let me get a look at this gorgeous... Uh, dress? Oh dear. I've never seen so many unusual colors and shapes in one piece of clothing. Right. I know, it's very modern. See all the giant pink polka dots? If you look carefully, you'll see that each one is a portrait of Emmerine herself. I wager when father sees you in this, he'll just scream with delight. I bet he'll scream all right. Huh? Pardon, mother, I didn't catch that. Huh? I'm sorry, Lucina, it's just that, well, this isn't exactly my uh, style. I'm very grateful for the thought, but I don't think I could wear it. What? Oh. I was sure you would have liked it. Well, perhaps next time I can go to the market, you could come and pick something for yourself. I know it seems frivolous in times like these, but in the brightened future I come from, I often fantasize of such... <sighs> well, Lucina, what a considerable daughter you've grown up to be. I'd be delighted to go to the market with you, delighted and honored. You have my gratitude. And when we go, I'll wear the new dress. Oh, gods, no. Huh? That's a really funny one. I noticed that like a lot of the mother communications are just like, oh, hey, I got you a dress, or oh, hey, I got you flowers and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, as for like, uh, I got to start going into like the whole child aspect now, so it's going to get really sick and complicated. Well, not complicated, but just like, we got a lot to talk about this episode with this optional chapter, so hopefully I'll get it all covered in uh, this thing that we're about to do. Let's see who we have with us. I want to get rid of you. You are never getting used again. Lucina, get in the party. You are mainstay from here on out. Uh, I like all these guys, I guess. So, I guess we're good to go. Footsteps. Probably not friendly. And likely more down those stairs. Think, Morgan, think. How would mom handle this? So, this optional paralogue. After you get Lucina to join your party, you start meeting children from the future that came with Lucina. Every time you pair up uh, two of your units who are in the present time, their children from the future will be available to uh, interact with in uh, chapters yet to come. They're all optional. But, uh, aside from Lucina, obviously, but since Robin and Krom already got married, Robin's child, Morgan, is already available to us. Robin is the only female character who has a child attached to them specifically. Actually, wait, no. Uh, Robin is the only character who has, like, a bit of a special... I guess Robin and Krom are, have a bit of a special exceptions to the rules of Fire Emblem Awakening in terms of who has children. Uh, for starters, any character we meet from here on out that joins our party 
they will not have children. So if you want to ship them with any certain characters, you can, but just know that you won't get any children from them. Any characters that we met up to this point, however, they do have children. Specifically, only the females. All the children are paired with a, a female character that we met up to this point. So, like, for example, Pain has a child we can meet in the future, as well as Sumia, who we can meet in the future, but not Long Ku. It doesn't matter who Long Ku marries, it's just a matter of the girls and who they marry. They'll always have a child attached to them specifically. Long Ku could be the father of anyone. Same with Frederick, same with uh, Libra, etc., etc. Krom is the one exception to this in which he is the only male unit to have a child attached to him at all times. He'll always be the father of Lucina. However, Robin's a bit of a special case because male Robin will have a daughter named Morgan, but female Robin will have a son named Morgan. So that's another bit of a special case for them. If you chose male Robin, then you could end up having another father who has a child attached to them. But yeah, since I wound up having... Uh, Robin be a girl, and since she's already married to Krom, Morgan already exists, therefore we could recruit him right after getting Lucina. But you need to go ahead and have him talk to his mother, that's the only way you could get these children to join you is if they meet their mother in battle. So, uh, before we were having Krom talk, talk to the optional party members on the battlefield, but this time we have to get Robin over there. Now that's said and done, let's get things started. So, I uh, gotta figure out who I want to be uh, attaching to people and whatnot. I know I was doing, like... Uh, communication sessions with like different characters like now that I've maxed out Krom and Robin kind of want to keep them separated for a while so let's do uh, Krom and Lucina I can't even get there can't do that apparently maybe I need to get Frederick out of the way first uh, let's get Lissa with Robin we'll get Longku with Pain uh, Lucina now can you go to Krom? yes you can uh, Noe, uh, we haven't finished Noe's with Tharja yet, so we'll go there. Um, oh, by the way, Anna is actually the one exception to this role in which all the women we've, me we've met up to this point will have children. Anna is the only woman we've met so far that will not have children, so, uh, no real need to get her married just so you could get another unit, just so you're aware of that. Um, but yeah, what else do we want to do? We're going to go with, I guess... Libra with Cherish, I guess? Or with Sumia? Sumia's more fragile, so I guess we'll do that, and then... I guess we'll pair these two up. But yeah, here we go. I need to get back into the swimming lane. So, I've kind of did some, like, self-reflective work, I guess you could call it, on this LP in general, like, what I've been doing with recording. It's like, I mentioned a while back that, like, I wanted to have the entirety of this LP recorded before my winter break ended. That did not happen, and I honestly have not had a chance to record in quite a while, actually, so that's kind of unfortunate, but I am sort of trying to think about it in which, like, I'm sort of stuck in that mindset I was back in year six last year, where I was so stressed and trying to get stuff done so thinking quickly that I just recorded so many LPs in one sitting, and I was exhausted, and I did not really enjoy a lot of the finished products, or I just, not that I didn't enjoy this, just like, I knew they could have turned out better if I took my time with it, so... Even though, like, I'm still super stressed out because a lot of upcoming LPs I have are very, like, editing intensive and voice actor heavy, so, like, I'm very stressed to get uh, them met for my own personal deadlines and whatnot, but I feel like I just need to go back to my roots of, like, chillaxing and just uh, not being so stressed out and going at a more leisurely pace with recording. I think it would be great if I just record one episode a day. I think that would be successful and, like... I would get progress done every day and like it wouldn't be nearly as like intensive for me to get that done like that so for that reason I feel like um, I feel like I could salvage this LP and make it a bit better if I just go a bit more slow with it so hopefully I could go ahead and do that I would like to finish up this LP as soon as possible though just because uh, this one I'm a bit more pressed for time because it's March when I'm recording this now and uh, I need to get this done uh, by April, because that's when this LP is going to be released. Uh, gonna release, but I don't know. It's just maybe if I could just get this one finished, and then for the next LP I'm recording after this one, which will be the last LP that needs to be recorded for year six, I could finally chillax a bit because I'll be uh, all caught up, I guess. I don't know, or I'll just have time on my hands or whatever. I could just record that one one at a time. I'm sorry this doesn't make any sense. I honestly 
I kind of messed myself up with just not remembering anything from our previous session, so I just recently finally looked at the Mario and Luigi Partners in Time footage and I edited all that, so I was looking back on that LP. The audio, it turned out a bit better than I was expecting, but like there were some problems of which anytime I did a Toad voice, the uh, microphone got a bit wonky. It's like, this mic, it's like trying to constantly level itself, so if I end up going super high pitch, then like, uh, switching back to low pitch, like when I go high pitch for the Toad voice and then when I go back to speaking regularly, it takes a few seconds for the audio to turn back to normal. I've noticed that, so uh, that's something I'll just have to look out for in the future, I guess. But um, in terms of like, I don't really know, in terms of like quality, it's not the worst thing in the world. There were also like a few little video hiccups with episode one of Partners in Time, which was like maybe panic thing the entire LP was ruined, but no. It was just that first episode, so kind of a bad introduction, I know, but it's not the worst thing that could happen, I guess. What is the worst thing that could happen is Crump dying, because we can't have that happen even in an optional chapter. So can you not die, please, Crump? This will be bad if you do. Thank you for dodging. Oh my god. Alright, I'll have to switch over to Lucina, just so we can keep Crump not dead. Uh, this guy, though, Morgan, can he survive one more hit? Thank you. Uh, he's getting to risky territory, though. We need to hurry up and meet up with him so he could faint and not have it be super crucial. Let's go ahead and have them run over here. He heals himself. Very, very nice. Oh, another guy shows up. Do we have a boss that we need to beat? Yeah, this guy over here. I feel like if we beat him, then the chapter just ends. So, uh, but for Robin, let's go ahead and talk to Morgan. Hey. You don't look like a treasure hunter. What brings you here? Oh. There you are, Mother. I was beginning to think we got separated. What? I'm sorry, what did you say? Well, no harm done. At least we can head home now. Goodness, the air here agrees with you. You look a decade younger, at least. Wait, let's go back to the Mother thing. Did you travel back from the future with Lucina? Huh? Who's Lucina? And did you seriously just ask me if I came from the future? Why are you looking at me like that? Hello, it's me, Morgan. Your son, love of your life, and strapping young lad and all that? Wow, you're really acting strange today. Let's go home and get you to bed. Hmm, but which way is home? Is it... My... Oh, uh, my head! <sighs> Easy, don't try to force it. Just stay calm and listen to me. I know this sounds mad, but I believe that you came here from the future. What? Are you out of your mind? That's not even possible! Actually, it is. Think about it. You said I looked younger, but look again, closely. Do I look like I'm of an age where I could have a child as old as you? And at this point in time, in our time, you still haven't even been born. No. Y you do look younger, but... Well... It's hard, I know, and you don't have to believe me right this minute. But you must come with me. It's dangerous alone, especially if your memory is gone. I was in the same position once, you know. If Krom hadn't found me lying on that field, who knows what would have happened to me. I might have been a minor character in this story. Wait, you woke up in the middle of the field too? Ha! Huh, like mother like son, huh? Oh, that's too funny. Glad to see you inherited my blithe outlook. Just try to stay close, will you? Yes, ma'am. And with that, Morgan has joined our group. So... I would pair Robin up with Morgan, but I don't think I'll be using him all that much. So, now I need to get into the statistics of child stats. How the fruit does this work? Teresa will hopefully fill in the gaps for anything I get wrong, but like basically, whatever abilities your unit has at the time of the child's pair log opening up, that is the list of abilities that they'll have. Um, like permanently or whatever so they inherit the parents like stats and abilities and whatnot when uh you tie the knot so make sure that you marry your characters uh the precise time when you have all the abilities that you want so it's not uh the smartest thing to go ahead and rush things right away and just get all the children immediately so it's better to actually just uh, wait it out a bit until you have all the stats you want then have them get married and then you'll be able to uh get some good rewards with your children units 
Here's the thing though, I don't really plan on using the child units. I know a lot of people actually really like them. I will be showing off the ones that I get opened up to me, but I am not going to go out of my way to show off every single one of them. For a couple of reasons actually. First off, I outright cannot get all of the child units because if you have, um, you got a ladle, if we got a ladle, no. If you have a female Robin who marries Krom, you outright cannot get all of the children in Fire Emblem Awakening because the amount of uh, boys and girls who could have children becomes uneven. You need Robin to be male and marry one of the girl units in order for it to work. So if you have a female Robin who marries Krom, it does not work, which is really, really stupid because I know like in the opening cutscene and some other cutscenes as well, it's it's implied that Sumia is supposed to be the OTP for Krom. So if I had done it like that, I uh, would be able to show off all the children. I was like, I was actually considering it for the LP. I thought it'd be cool just to, even if I wasn't going to like uh, show them all off in battle and like be efficient with all of them, I thought it'd be cool to just at least show every single character that we could uh, encounter in this game but I uh, can't outright can't do it because I have a female Robin and that's who I wanted to use in this LP because it's the character that like I most enjoy using when playing Fire Emblem Awakening so kind of messed myself up on that one I apologize if you're kind of bummed out about that but um, that's just sort of how I wanted to go about doing things so uh, I will make mention of any children that we don't get, like, near the end of the adventure when I know we won't be getting any more children. I, uh, will be, I'll tell you which, I'll show you, like, pictures of who the children are and, uh, who they're connected to and all that jazz. Um, another thing is that I don't really like shipping the characters all that much. There aren't a lot of ships that, like, I see. I've looked at the communication sessions and whatnot, but a lot of them I just, like, I feel like it's kind of forced and like uh, some of these characters I don't really care about in general so I would be going out of my way to like ship characters and like do a bunch of off-screen training for characters that like I don't even use and like just having their communication sessions having the LP last longer than it already is I feel like it's just unnecessary padding for me because I'm not going for 100% and I don't know it, because of that if I try to make it like a semi 100% and have it uh, like not mean much in the end it would just kind of waste time in my opinion so for that reason, I'm just uh, kind of going about it the way I want to do it. And that is just using the characters I like and going through the, experiencing the story. Hopefully that's okay with all of you. But yeah, it's so weird that like uh, Lucina will always have a sibling, which is something that very rarely gets brought up because it could be literally anyone. Whoever uh, Krom marries, uh, that person will automatically have a child uh, because he can't marry Anna, actually, because Anna's the only... The only person Anna can have communication sessions with is Robin, so... Um, actually, Robin and one other character we haven't met yet, but still, like, you can't have Krom marry Anna, so... Lucina will have a sibling, but, like, it's never brought up, which is kind of funny. I know it's sort of optional, so not canon, not set in stone, whatnot, but... It's kind of funny that, like, such a celebrated character doesn't, uh, have their sibling mentioned. It's like, it's like real life, where, uh, I don't get mentioned in the life of any of my siblings, because they're a lot more important than I am. <laughs> no hard feelings, yeah, that sums it all up. But, uh, yeah, and one more thing I should mention is that the children will always be attached to the mother. However, they'll always have hair color that, uh, is equivalent to their father. So Morgan doesn't always have blue hair. Uh, if you see the official artwork for all the children characters, they have different, they might have different colored hair from the way they look in your game. That's because, depending on who you have them marry, their hair changes. So, uh, because Morgan is the son of Krom, he has blue hair. If I had a mayor, you like Frederick, he'd have brown hair. So, no one's over here. They all ran away, so I could get these guys moving and grooving if I want to. Uh, Morgan is kind of useless, so I'll just have him like sit over here. Uh, I guess we could use a staff on Morgan just so I could uh, get a bit of experience with Libra. Very minor, but still kind of nice. Oh, wait, no, that's an enemy right there. God darn, I'm stupid. I thought those were all allies. Uh, Cherish? Cherish does a bit more damage. Right wow, I'm super dumb, but you two should be able to finish them off no problem, so... Not the worst thing that could have happened. Uh, how do I get rid of it? Thank you. Uh, what do we got? Let's see, let's go ahead and get rid of... Okay, we'll get rid of you. I 
I do, and it's on my side, that's for sure. Was that a 69? And since these paralogs are actually optional, that means I know for a fact that there won't be any story cutscene after I save the game here, so I literally have no excuse. I will do off screen training for Lissa after this paralog is finished. I swear to you, I will do it. If I come back here and Lissa is still a stinking mage, I will be in big stinking trouble, basically. Uh, that's it over there, Frederick. Guess go over here, I guess. I guess go over here, I guess, sure. So yeah, a lot of stinking stuff has happened since uh, I last uh, talked to all y'all, but I kind of want to save that for like a future episode, because I feel like if I just cover all my bases in this one video, then like I won't have anything to talk about in future episodes. I guess the one thing I could talk about is I'm I'm sick again. Not the same sickness I had during Partners in Time. I got sick again while editing Partners in Time somehow. Like, he, listening to myself be sick made me sick again. So let me know if I made you sick on watching Partners in Time. Like, that'll be just hearing someone be sick got you in the mindset. Because I feel like that, I feel like that's actually factual if you, like, uh, surround yourself with, like, sick feelings or, like, think negatively. It actually impacts your real physical health. So maybe I truly did make myself sick by editing that LP and just listening to myself be sick. Because all, all the sinking sniffles and everything that I had to, like, edit out of that, it was... It was thinking obnoxious and I wouldn't do it again, but with this I was like, I wanted to wait till I was 100% better before recording Fire Emblem Awakening, but I've been sick for like two weeks now and I've been, it's just been coughing, nonstop coughing, and I really think and hate it, it's still so thinking painful, but um, I eventually just said whatever and like I just went with it because I needed to get stuff done and I was well enough to where I could record, so hopefully I'm not completely backpedaling here and I'll end up being 10 times worse. Uh, when I wake up tomorrow. I'm not going to record a buttload today, but I would like to get some sort of progress done, as Robin always says. Now, that's what I call progress. Or is that... Oh, no, that's Robin, yeah. Uh, what do I want to do now? Hmm. Go over here, I guess. Long coup. Need to start uh, thinking about using the seals on Long coup and possibly Tharja, because he's getting very close to max level. Uh, we got Frederick who could reach anyone, but do I want him to? Lucina will go over here. Tharja will switch with... Actually, wait. Robin? We'll have Lissa heal someone for once. What a niche concept. So, hey, Lissa's actually going to get some experience for once. What is she right now? Level 5, okay. You need to get her to level 10 before I could change her class. I know it's recommended to get her to level 20 so she can get, like, the ultimate stats and abilities and whatnot, but I'm not into competitive play, and I'm not into, like, getting the top percentage of Fire Emblem characters, so I'm just sort of gonna get it done and over with, just so I could actually use this a period. Uh, who else is there? Uh, you two. You two weirdos. I guess we'll go over here. Switch to Noe just to be safe. And time for the counterattack. Frederick's all alone. How sad. Everyone's rounding out over here. Oh, and in case you're wondering, uh, the children cannot... I don't think the children could get married to the other children characters. I don't know why... But it might get explained later. I honestly genuinely do not know the answer to why this is. But Robin could marry the children units. Robin's the only one who could go ahead and marry the children units. Because I guess they are the same age as you and everything like that. But just the whole concept of it, that they're from the future, it's just like, it's, it's weird. I know there's a lot more controversial Fire Emblem shipping opinions and whatnot or just shipping like factoids that happen in later games that's even more questionable or like questionable pairings and questionable like dialogue and treatment of certain characters and all that jazz but it's stinking weird like why does robin i guess like because you're the avatar so they want the player character to be able to marry any waifu i guess that's what they're going for but it's not the greatest thing to have available in your story, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Uh, whatever. It's... 
Uh, let me do that, get rid of the Risen. Arta is what level right now? She's level 17. Okay, might need to think about switching classes soon. Uh, Lucina. Here, speaking of classes, this semester has been god awful. Uh, I like how I timed that. It was like god awful slash the dragon. But, um, I have a four day schedule. I feel like I've talked about this. I'm not sure if I did or not. Uh, I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but like, basically, I have a four day schedule where every class is nine to one and it's sick and exhausting. It's like I'm in high school over again. Uh, but. But I have to like get up at six, so it's super annoying. I feel like I did talk about this. So I'm gonna stop right now. I'm gonna stop you right there. Uh, go over here, Lissa. Heal. Get some of that off-screen training minimized a little bit. Uh, something else I've been doing recently is I, uh, I went above and beyond when 100% completing Smash Ultimate because getting all the spirits and beating all the challenges wasn't enough for me. Apparently, I also needed to go ahead and uh, level up every single spirit to level 99. And also, uh, get every spirit in my possession. So, like, you know how some spirits can be enhanced and changed to different ones? Like, Chibi Robo at level 99, he could get turned into Super Chibi Robo. So, I would need two Chibi Robo spirits so that I could have both of them in my uh, inventory. One that I keep as Chibi Robo and one that I evolve into Super Chibi Robo at level 99. However, there are two spirits that could get changed at level 99 that are exclusive to World of Light, meaning that you would have to go through New Game Plus or just a new file of World of Light in order to get another one of them. And that's Marks and Dracula. Those are the only World of Light exclusive spirits that uh, could have their form changed at level 99. So I wound up 100% completing New Game Plus because you can't even get those spirits until you're basically 90% done with New Game Plus or with World of Light in general, so... Oh, that's awkward. I hope you keep your levels when you die. But yeah, basically, I am stinking exhausted and tired of playing Smash Bros. And I don't even want to look at the stinking game ever again until all of the DLC is released. Because I am stinking done with it. I just, I kind of forced myself to finish it today because I just wanted the distraction out of my stinking head. Like, I can't have it there anymore. I finally finished it, so I'm just like, good I'm done I don't have to worry about it or think about it ever again I'm just done with it now part of me really wants to go back in 100% melee because like I feel like it might be kind of doable now that I'm older and considering how like small it might be in comparison to a uh, world of to smash ultimate so I kind of want to do it but at the same time I know I'll keel over if I do such a thing so oh boy what do I want to do? Uh, we need to get rid of this dude so that Frederick could pair up with Robin. I guess... I'll have Noe take care of this guy because she hasn't got any experience in this part yet. I don't even know what level she's supposed to be at right now. Yeah! Uh, she is level... Uh, 9. Cool. Okay, now Frederick, pair up with Robin. Uh, let's have... Oh boy, Cherish and Anna. Very far behind, but they're on their way. Just put them right there. We will... Uh, let's have Robin... Do I want to get this far in with Robin, though? That's kind of dangerous. Okay, cool. We'll do that. Booty up. Dragon up. Oh, hey, Pain finally got added to Fire Emblem Heroes, by the way. It, like, took way too singing long. They just recently added Beast units, so Pain finally got added. Which is really singing cool. Also, while I was, like, on the sort of recording hiatus, I kind of realized, I was like, just looking, listening through the Fire Emblem Awakening soundtrack, I have not praised it enough. This game has a criminally amazing soundtrack. It is insanely good. And like, I feel like people don't talk about it all that much, how amazing stellar the soundtrack is. It's stinking incredible. I don't know what song I'll be using for the end slate thing. I might be switching it out because there's so many singing good songs, but my thinking god, this this game has really singing amazing music if you go listen through it. Um, 
But yeah, let's see what I could do now. Uh, sure, we'll do that. I guess something I, uh, I feel like, oh, hey. Hey, she said the thing, cool! What was I even trying to say? I was like, going, hup, dup, 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 dup. um, something that I kind of wanted to mention is that, uh, something that doesn't get brought up nowadays is that Lucina in general is a very celebrated character, so like, did I know of Lucina's existence? I, I knew Marth was a girl. I knew this wasn't Marth because I knew who Marth was and all that jazz, so... I don't think I, I did not know that her name was Lucina, and I did not know that she was the daughter of Krom, but I remember uh, it being said that Lucina was, like, awarded in Japan. Uh, she was, like, the most popular female character in video game history, or most liked, or whatever. And uh, I agree with it. She's a really cool character and everything, and I know she's, like, that was a very impactful twist and everything. Uh, something I really like about that scene, I saw someone else mention this, but like how when she reveals herself to, oh no, Libra's without a weapon, that's awkward. Oh, I have a ladle, that would be hilarious to watch. Uh, wait, you're right there. But, um, what I was trying to say, when Lucina revealed herself to Krom, uh, it was really impactful the fact that like he didn't have that big of a reaction to it. He didn't ask why she was uh, from the future or like how she was as old as she was or like why she was here or whatever. He just realized the fact that if she was here, then something terrible must have happened in the future. And he immediately felt bad for her that she was left with no other option than to uh, go back to the past because everything in the future was gone to her. So he... It was just like a really cool scene that was handled very well and whatnot. So I very much like the twist. I wish it wasn't spoiled for me so I could have experienced it on my own, but oh well. Um, other than that, though, uh, we can't beat this guy yet. Other than that, though, I know Lucine's a very celebrated character and everything like that, so I wasn't sure. Something I, uh, oh, what I was trying to get at, I guess I can see it, that's cool. What I was trying to get at is the voice actor for Lucina is Laura Bailey, who voices Toru Honda in Fruits Basket. By the way, Fruits Basket reboot! Oh, boy, I'm excited. Waiting for the audio to get leveled out. Are we good? Okay, cool. But yeah, um, Laura Bailey is the one who vo voices Lucina, but like, on the subject of her being like a very celebrated character and everything like that, uh, apparently, uh, just sort of an example of how voice actors are treated in the industry was that Laura Bailey did not know that she voiced Lucina until fans told her about it because um, when she was recording for the character, she was told that she was just voicing a character called Marth. And because Lucina never says her name in any voice acting cutscenes or whatever, she would not know if she uh, was actually Lucina or whatever. So. Uh, I saw like interviews of her or just like her talking about Fire Emblem Awakening and whatnot where after she like voiced the character and like they didn't even tell her that the game got released or whatever they wanted her to sign like when she met fans at conventions and everything they had things where they're like oh my god I love your performance Lucina is really cool she would like tell them oh wait I didn't voice Lucina I just voiced Marth like she didn't know who Lucina was but she had to get informed later on by fans that Lucina and Marth were the same character so it's just like sort of a it's kind of a funny story but like uh, when you consider the fact that, like, oh, wow, you beat him in one hit. I kind of wanted Robin to do that, but okay. Uh, but, like, it's kind of funny when you think about it, but uh, when you actually take a moment to realize how crummy voice act video game voice actors are treated in which they don't get told about what they're even working on in the first place because everyone's always so secretive, it's kind of lame when you think of it that way. So, uh, she knows now, and hopefully she enjoys the fact that she voices one of the coolest character of all characters of all time. And... I have no way to segue this into finishing the stage, so I'm just going to say we finished the stage. Right. This must be Naga's tear. I can feel the power coursing through it. Wow. Sweet. This baby should keep us safe in battles to come. <laughs> I hope you're right about that, sis. And we got a cool weapon, I guess. I think. <laughs> That's a lot to take in. It's everything we know about the situation at this point. No. The future I came from in, is in ruins. You're sure about that? No. One possible future is in ruins, yes. But you may hail from another path. We're fighting now to ensure that no one's future is lost. Unfortunately, if you join us, it'll mean more fighting for you too. Well... I understand. I'm sorry, but even after hearing all that... I still don't remember anything but you. Um... Don't apologize. We'll pull your memory back bit by bit if we have to. 
Besides, if you start apologizing, I'll have two as well. My past is still full of holes, but I'm getting along, and you will too. Yes. As long as you're with me, the rest will work itself out. Now come on, we've got a future that needs saving. <laughs> you really do take after me. You know, now that you mention it, there is one thing I remember. Huh? What's that? I've always strived to become a great tactician like you. And even though this war is terrible, at least now I could learn from you firsthand. Wow. Well, you're nothing if not optimistic. Wherever or whenever you came from, I'm glad you made it here, Morgan. <laughs> Me too. I don't like that cue, but yes, we are finally back in business. Let's get back to recording and let's finish up this adventure, even though we still got a long way to go. Next time on Fire Emblem Awakening, we might be doing another paralogue or we might be continuing on with the story. I don't know, but what I do know is that I promise I will come back with a fully leveled up Lissa. If I don't, then I'll Let's Play Conquer. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.